important to keep the options on the table. And it's important for me to say to the members of Congress, if you've got a good idea, bring it forward. There will be no political retribution. Now, I've got an idea that I'd like for Congress to consider, and I want to share the idea with you here. It's a novel idea. Oh, it's really not that novel. As a matter of fact, it's a part of the, uh, the Federal Employee Retirement Plan. It's, it's a thrift benefit plan. It's a plan that allows a federal employees to set aside some of their money and put it in safe stocks and bonds so they get a Stuns his sweetheart in a Christmas greeting from Iraq. The holiday message from Iraq that we feature here on KMAC 28 always brings warm wishes from overseas to family members here on the South Plains. They cross this river putting their clothes and everything else in a black plastic bag and when they get over on this side they dump everything from toothpaste to shoes to old t-shirts. La policía sugiere que guarde los llaves en la bolsa en vez de la coche. Same uniform that they wore in 1960. You're right. I'm, I'm wearing sneakers and I have water that's coming up to my knees. Each time, okay, you can see the back of my pants here. We're getting snow on them. The back mm. of my legs are completely wet because we're standing here with the only Redskins fan in the bar. Trey, tell us, you said you're die hard. I grew up in Washington, lived there my whole life. Forced to move here to Texas because my wife made me move, so. And so you're here, anybody throwing things at you yet? Does this mean the two women were killed by the same person? No, Randy, it does not necessarily mean that both women were murdered by the same person, but it does probably mean that both women knew the same person and that that person actually probably had sexual intercourse with the women just before they were murdered. That possible DNA match means that authorities have enough evidence to make an arrest or at least to clear somebody's name. Earlier today, I spoke with Sergeant Greg Parrott to find out exactly what they need to know to get this killer off Lubbock streets. As we're sitting here conducting this interview, there is still someone out there who's at least committed one homicide. Possibly two. Possibly two. In 1999, Amanda Schwinn's badly beaten body was found in East Lubbock. Four years later, authorities found Cynthia Palacio's partially nude body in a bar ditch. She'd been strangled to death. Then, just last year, a woman traveling down FM 41 found Linda Trevino Carbajal. She'd been beaten and strangled to death. I think it's even more scary. If they're thinking that there is a connection, you know, between the two. Sue Bybee remembers the day police found Carbajal's body just a few miles from her home. We had heard the helicopters and we had, you know, seen all the patrolmen going down the road. And, yeah, it was scary. Bybee says until this murderer is found, she's keeping her doors locked. Sergeant Parrott doesn't think people should panic, but until the killer is found... The person is still out on the street, and there's no way for us to predict what could happen. We obviously have concerns for the safety of our community. The DNA found on Palacio and Carbajal was sent to our local Department of Public Safety and it didn't match anything in that, in that system. Also, DNA taken from similar Texas murders did not match the DNA found on the two women. For the past three years, friends of 72-year-old Earl Powell have waited and waited. And today that wait was finally supposed to come to an end. The man charged with failing to stop and help Powell was supposed to begin his trial here today at the Lubbock County Courthouse. But instead, for the seventh time, his trial was postponed. Now friends say they're just plain tired and it's time for this case to come to a rest. It's, it's very hard when you know that someone just absolutely just left someone on the street and maybe even knowing that, you know, for dead. Almost three years ago, Earl Powell was busy raking leaves and gravel along FM 400. For most of his 72 years, that was how Powell made his living. Wherever there's cans, he was out there picking them up, and that's just Earl. That was Earl. Cleaning up Slayton, Texas. <laughs> Keeping Slayton clean. On April 10th, 2002, Powell was struck by a hit-and-run driver. Two months later, he died. 
Now, three years later, even though Jesse Garcia admitted to hitting Powell, he's yet to go to trial. Monique Ruiz was the closest Powell had to family. I think it's time that, that you know, it needs to go to court. We need to put an end to this and that let our community rest and let Earl rest in peace. Early Monday morning, Monique left her shop here, put a note up on the door so that everybody would know she was at the courts, keeping a promise she made to Earl three years ago. Because I told him I was going to do it, and I will. I'm going to be there the day of the court hearing, you know, in behalf for him. No matter how long it goes on? No matter how long it goes on, I'll be there for him. <laughs> Jesse Garcia's case has been postpone, postponed for a variety of reasons. First, he's had three different attorneys, and he's filed for a continuance several times. But most recently, District Attorney Bill Souter told me that the prosecutor in this case thought that Souter had actually spoken with certain residents of Slayton, but it turns out Souter hadn't. I get to move my legs now, and in a wheelchair, I didn't get to move my legs as much. Three months ago, six-year-old Candace Pope needed her mom's help to get around. Now, the little speed demon has grabbed the reins. Why don't we call it a race horse? Okay, it's a race horse. And even wild horses couldn't slow her down. She's just so happy. She almost makes her fall. She starts giggling and raising her hands and so excited. Excitement that started back in Arizona, where Candace endured excruciating physical therapy. Was it hard in Arizona? Were you doing some really hard stuff? Yes. I slid it on the table that was a wooden table, and it hurted me, so I had to hurry. But the intense therapy has paid off. Only two months ago, Candace could barely reach her hand above her shoulder. They only went about this long. And how high do they go now? All the way to the sky. Yes. I can touch the ceiling of the car now. Every time we're in the car now, she's either kicking the back of the seat, trying to see how high she can get her feet, or she's trying to touch the ceiling, because she can touch the ceiling now. Most moms would probably tell their child to stop kicking the seat. But to Cindy, each jolt is a blessing. I'm like, go ahead, go ahead, kick higher. <laughs> Keep touching, touch with the other hand. Almost as jarring, Candace has begun wondering why she can't walk and others can't. This trip is the first time she started asking me why she has cerebral palsy. Why me, Mama? And, and that, that's been different, so now she's like, well, I can still walk, though. A determined little girl, wise enough to teach us all a very powerful lesson. Don't take things for granted, you know, little things. Erin Kennedy, KMAC, 28. Hey, God knows there's something wrong. So I ran over there to Miss Gloria and told her, did she see Tammy? And they said they haven't saw Tammy. So I say, it's something wrong somewhere. Friends and family began to worry when Tammy didn't answer her phone. Moments later, they found out Tammy and her three children had been brutally murdered. My stepdad had came and he was like, you better lock the door while you're here asleep and you got the door unlocked. They just found this woman and her kid's dead. She never did hurt nobody. That's what I'm saying. She never, she, she never did hurt nobody. While neighbors waited for answers, they spent the morning remembering a loving mother and her three young children. Emily Fountain has known Tammy for 34 years, but they just recently reunited. I was going to the mailbox and she asked me my name and I told her, I said, my name is Emily Fountain. She just jumped up and hugged me. I said, be careful, I just had surgery. She was so glad to see me. She was in a suite and her kids was real sweet. Them twins were real sweet and the little girl was sweet. Yeah, she had some nice kids, though. Tammy, Jasmine, Kadil, and Kashim had just moved back to Lubbock from Dallas. Neighbors say the Coopers had only been in their new apartment for two months. Now, they want answers. I didn't hear nothing last night, and I was up to like 3 o'clock. I didn't hear no gunshots or nothing. I don't know what could have happened. As Tracy just mentioned, even though the Cooper family actually lived in this complex with other families, a lot of people are saying that they just have no idea what happened. Most neighbors say this is a quiet community. In fact, I spoke with one woman who said she moved here to get away from the... A year old man was transported by Arrow Care to the hospital after being hit with shrapnel in the leg, actually in a major artery. And we understand this explosion happened near a cotton gin. Yeah, sus uh, propósitos. There are only 96 designated rest areas along Texas highways, and one of them just got a multi-million dollar renovation. The next time you drive between Hale Center and Abernathy, there's a great new place to cool off and make a pit stop. 
Yesterday, the Texas Department of Transportation cut the ribbon for a much improved rest area on I-27. TxDOT spent $5 million to renovate the popular highway stop. The best improvement? An air-conditioned lobby, as well as improved parking, a security system, and updated restrooms. TxDOT says that more than 40 million people take advantage of rest areas here in Texas. The 4th on Broadway committee is planning the biggest Independence Day party in Lubbock history. The committee announced the schedule of events for the 20th anniversary bash. There will be musicians from all over the South Plains and of course a street full of food vendors. Then the party moves to Mackenzie Park for a free concert followed by a fireworks spectacular at sundown. The Lubbock ISD welcomed its newest school board member. Mario Ibarra will represent District 1. The school board's vote was unanimous. Ibarra replaces Eric Medina, who resigned last month. Ibarra will serve on the school board until the next election in May. State Representative Carl Isett of Lubbock is pushing his Truth in Taxation Act in Austin. Isett says the goal of his bill is to inform citizens of any changes in property taxes. He also wants two public hearings before any proposal comes to a vote. ICIT is in Austin for the special session on property tax relief and school finance. Remember this embarrassing soundbite from Governor Rick Perry? Adios, mofo. Well, yesterday Perry apologized for his inappropriate comment. The governor said he thought the interview with a Houston reporter was finished. Oh, I call. Perry will hit the road today for an 11 city tour to support his tax proposals. The U.S. House approves a constitutional amendment banning the burning of the American flag. It is the seventh vote since the Supreme Court ruled that burning old glory is protected as free speech. The measure now goes to the Senate, where it was last considered five years ago. House Republicans are now pushing a Social Security plan on a more modest scale. It calls for using budget surplus to create individual accounts for workers under 55. Democrats argue the bill is only a cosmetic change of President Bush's proposal. President Bush says it's time for America to start building nuclear power plants again. He says the economy needs the non-polluting power that nuclear plants can generate. No new, no new commercial reactors have been built since 1979. In the panhandle town of Claude, a massive crack in the earth suddenly opened up. The 30-foot trench developed Monday night near Highway kind of 287. It drained a small pond. Geologists aren't sure what caused the hole, and there were no earthquakes. They say sinkholes are common, but one this large around here is not. No one was hurt, and the area is blocked off, so no one falls in. Lubbock's Mahon Library was ground zero for an alien invasion. Last night, the children's section of the library was decorated like a spaceship, and some people were dressed like bug-eyed monsters and space creatures. The kids watched the classic B-movies, The Night America Trembled, and Flying Saucers vs. Earth. Can you name these Lubbock musicians? Wishing he could fly. That is Mike Pritchard, Mike Boyd, and Mark Walney performing at the High Noon concert in the gazebo of the courthouse. The concert series is sponsored by the Lubbock Arts Alliance. And be sure to catch next week's performance with the jazz group, The Goatees. It is 641 right now, 70 outside. Two Lubbock golfers needed to win if they wanted to continue playing in the Women's WTGA Championship. Next in sports... Quieren demostrar la tradición a los estudiantes para explicar la tradición y sé dónde viene y eso. Qué bien. Así es que las clases de la escuela están usando esto como en aid, en training aid. Sí, clases de español en high school. Pero me encanta mi trabajo y es, es, es un placer, de verdad. Pues a nosotros es una gran ayuda y te encantado de que estés en el equipo de Si sí Se Puede. Bueno, gracias por invitarme, mucho. ¿Y a qué, qué vamos a presentar ahora? ¿Qué información nos Sí, tienes? vamos a empezar con un gran cuenta, de verdad. Erika Ponce es la primera hispana para ganar el título de Miss Lubbock 2005 y es, es increíble, de verdad. Es, es hermosa y amable, mucho, pero describe todo como un honor y ser la primera hispana en ganar el título. ¿Y tenemos algo en videotape? Sí, ahora. Ah. Con mucho orgullo, Erika Ponce demuestra su cinta. Como la primera hispana en ganar el título, 
describe el premio como un honor y una oportunidad. Tienes metas sí. para las mujeres, las sí. niñas. Uh, dime sobre, sobre estas metas con, con las mujeres y las mujeres hispánicas. Bueno, cuando era más joven uh, no tenía alguien, uh, no tenía personas para decirme que yo pudiera hacer las cosas que tenía dentro de mi corazón. will not Flowers continue to pour into the hospital where Pope John Paul II appears to be making a steady recovery. And well-wishers maintain their vigil nearby. The 84-year-old pontiff spent a peaceful night in his hospital bed, but will spend several more nights here. While medical experts agree Parkinson's and other ailments may make it more difficult for the Pope to recover, the Vatican spokesman has been upbeat, saying the Holy Father has not suffered any more breathing spasms and could return to the Vatican next week. <laughs> if he is still hospitalized on Sunday, Pope John Paul will likely perform his weekly blessing from the hospital. Here at St. Peter's Square, where Pope John Paul would normally address the masses and pray, today it's his pilgrims who are praying praying for this resilient man to make another speedy recovery. From all over the world, they come. Ireland. My thoughts go to the Pope for his recovery and uh, hoping that he will be back in the, in the Vatican as soon as possible. England. Well, it's terrible that he's, he's doing everything. I hope he gets better. And the United States. Uh, he means a lot to a lot of people. A lot of devout Catholics believe in him and uh, really need him. And all over the world, they pray. Nuns gathered at Mother Teresa's spiritual home in Calcutta, the Pope in their hearts and thoughts. The Vatican doesn't plan another health update until Friday. Another positive sign, Pope John Paul is indeed recovering. Flowers continue to pour into the hospital where Pope John Paul II appears to be making a steady recovery. And well-wishers maintain their vigil nearby. The 84-year-old pontiff spent a peaceful night in his hospital bed, but will spend several more nights here. While medical experts agree Parkinson's and other ailments may make it more difficult for the Pope to recover, the Vatican spokesman has been upbeat, saying the Holy Father has not suffered any more breathing spasms and could return to the Vatican next week. <laughs> if he is still hospitalized on Sunday, Pope John Paul will likely perform his weekly blessing from the hospital. Here at St. Peter's Square, where Pope John Paul would normally address the masses and pray, today it's his pilgrims who are praying praying for this resilient man to make another speedy recovery. From all over the world, they come. Ireland. My thoughts go to the Pope for his recovery and uh, hoping that he will be back in the, in the Vatican as soon as possible. England. Um, well, it's terrible that he's, he's doing everything. I hope he gets better. And the United States. Uh, he means a lot to a lot of people. A lot of devout Catholics believe in him and uh, really need him. And all over the world, they pray. Nuns gathered at Mother Teresa's spiritual home in Calcutta, the Pope in their hearts and thoughts. The Vatican doesn't plan another health update until Friday. Another positive sign, Pope John Paul is indeed recovering. Drew Levinson, CBS News, Rome.
talent. <laughs> he didn't have it enough to concentrate. I uh, have a little problem with Bernie. Uh, uh, Bernie uh, saying that I'm uh, anti-death penalty. I'm, I'm not anti-death penalty. I'm anti the wrong guy getting executed. Yeah. 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 A distinction. Two thousand years ago, no, two thousand years. No, I don't want to close down Huntsville. Two thousand years ago, uh, we executed an innocent man named Jesus Christ. And the question is, what have we learned in two thousand years? And uh, we don't want to make a mistake like that. I want to straighten Bernie. I want to straighten Bernie. Mammy's good gumbo. I got the rambling fever. Said bye to Ma and Pa. Uh, and I'm running kind of in the spirit of, uh, of Sea Biscuit. I want to be every man's horse in this race. And I don't intend to place or to show, I intend to win. Yes, sir. That is going to keep our numbers very, very in danger of a storm and, and, and rain coming in. But this is a crisis of his own creation. This is a crisis of his own making so that he can have his preordained idea about privatization, which undermines Social Security. Set of numbers, and we must operate off the same set of values. And if your goal is to strengthen Social Security, you do exactly the opposite of what the president is doing. I'm just going to need the people to be for. The president's numbers aren't fuzzy. They're wrong. Yeah. And every children, that's what Democrats are committed to. We will work together with President Bush to strengthen Social Security, but we will not work with anybody in America to destroy Social Security. We're going to save Social Security.
keys. Most drivers make the decision at some point, handing over the keys to their car. Whether it's to a sober driver, a family member needing a favor, or a friend wanting to take your new wheels for a spin. But even though most drivers have done it, few think about the responsibilities associated with it. Like what happens if that driver got in an accident? Well, I think, honestly speaking, the person who crashed it should pay for it. If I lend the car to someone, I would be the one that's ultimately responsible because the car is insured under my name. It'd probably be my fault because I loaned her, her my car, so... It'd be on my shoulders. You are allowed to let someone else drive your car if they have a driver's license. But if they don't have insurance and are involved in an at-fault accident, your insurance may provide the primary liability coverage. If you hand over your keys to a friend, you may be held responsible. Even if you are not driving, you could be held responsible. In most cases, the insurance policy that covers the car is the primary insurance for any property damage or bodily injury. Therefore, the person insured becomes legally obligated to pay. All the more reason experts say to be very careful who you let drive your car. If you're allowing somebody to borrow your car, make sure you know the person very, very well. In addition, you should ask yourself some questions like, do they have insurance? If they have insurance, do they have a policy that does cover them when they are borrowing somebody else's vehicle? for temporary use, and in addition, have they ever had any at-fault accidents? As a general rule, the insurance for the car typically follows the vehicle, but check with your insurance agency. They may require certain conditions be met in order to cover other drivers. It's also a good idea to know the driving record of the person getting behind your wheel. I'm Kate Brooks. You might have a drawer or cabinet full of them, over-the-counter medications, also known as OTCs, drugs and remedies that help everything from the common cold to heartburn. Doctors caution that just because these drugs are available without prescription does not mean they're safe for everyone. Well, over-the-counter medicines are just that, they're drugs, so they need to be respected as such. You can get into issues with taking too much acetaminophen or Tylenol, which can cause liver problems. Um, pseudoephedrine, which is decongestant, can aggravate high blood pressure or irregular heartbeat. Antihistamines um, may be dangerous in the elderly because they can increase the risk of falling. It's always best to take the least amount of something that you possibly can. Doctors say taking over-the-counter medications properly is extremely important. It is possible to misuse an over-the-counter remedy, and the biggest mistake people would make with that would be overdosing on it. So it's really important to follow the label directions carefully. At this time of year, which is the height of the cold and flu season, many people are searching for relief, but even popular cold and flu remedies should be taken with care. There is no cure for the cold. All over-the-counter medications are designed to relieve symptoms and generally make you feel better. Zinc gluconate, which is found in products such as cold ease, has been shown to reduce the duration of colds by about half. Cold ease has been tested and found safe to take with other medications, but Dr. Garrett warns that other OTCs might have adverse reactions with some drugs. So always check with your doctor or pharmacist before you combine any medications. I'm Emily Wright. Smith, and uh, he's excited about it as, as well as, uh, as I am. But I just wanted to tell you very briefly, in a, in a couple of minutes, that what this award is about. Fans have voted for their favorite quarterbacks and running backs based on their performance, game statistics, of course, and overall contributions to the team, even if they didn't have the highest statistics. Let's see who the winner is here. And the winner is Peyton Manning of the Indianapolis Colts. Here's the check. 
So it was a, a fun year to uh, throw the ball and, and put the ball in the air, and I uh, enjoyed doing that. But uh, I'm especially uh, proud of this award because it's voted on by the fans, and the fans are still what make the game great. And, uh... Curtis Martin. <laughs> For this award, and uh, it, it means a lot because I have a lot, so, many, so much respect for the uh, great quarterbacks that are out there, and, and to be the, the top uh, winner of the of the Air Award, but also because it's voted on by the fans, which I think uh, makes it special. And I really appreciate FedEx and their great support of the NFL. So, voted on by the fans uh, uh, to, to be you know up there with Dante Culpepper and in the same category as Donovan McNabb, and share this award with Curtis Martin is special, but also. FedEx makes a great donation to uh, St. Vincent Children's Hospital. So it's really a kind of a win-win all the way around. Uh, I'm really honored to receive the award. A Super Bowl commercial should be entertaining and it should also get across some piece of information that the general public may not know already. So this is our chance to introduce FedEx Kinkos, which is a new entity, uh, to a very, very large audience. Burt Reynolds is an American legend. You know, he's an individual who is well-known, well-respected. He's a man's man, but at the same time, the ladies like him too. Uh, we thought it was great to associate the FedEx brand. We think he'll break through uh, in the media circus that is the Super Bowl. Uh, and he's a, a very likable, very lovable, very believable character.
Jacksonville, Florida's population doesn't even rank it in the top 50 cities in the United States. In fact, it's only the fourth largest city in Florida. But that's not stopping Jacksonville from hosting the Super Bowl this Sunday. We've had, you know, twice as many uh, volunteers as most host cities. We've raised almost double the amount of private sector dollars, not to mention the volunteers that have helped just really spiff, spiff the place up and get it ready. So we're proud of this event. This is, you know, second only to the Olympics, and for a city like Jacksonville, it's a tremendous honor. Still, when you only have 1,800 permanent hotel rooms and over 100,000 expected visitors, you've got to get creative, like parking cruise ships next to the stadium to act as floating hotels. This year's Super Bowl in Jacksonville, very distinct and uh, unique from other Super Bowls. As we can see from the cruise ships coming along the St. John's River to the hospitality that the whole surrounding area has showed to us, it's a, really been a fantastic experience for the NFL, our sponsors, and most importantly, our fans. And Jacksonville's size hasn't kept big companies away from the marketing bonanza that is the Super Bowl. Besides the multi-million dollar television advertising we see during the game, here in Jacksonville, many companies see an opportunity to get up close and personal with the big game's well-heeled fans. Anheuser-Busch has brought in their Clydesdales. Campbell's is passing out 100,000 soup samples, and Cadillac will be running Jacksonville's guests around town in 400 Escalades and SRXs. The Super Bowl is a great opportunity for a company like Cadillac. People are coming in from all over the world to have a great time in Jacksonville, and it's our opportunity to give the world a test drive. So it's business as usual at the Super Bowl, and Jacksonville couldn't be happier. I'm Chris Hansen.